Hi everyone, good to have you back. I don't know about you, but I've been told all my life that we need democracy. Democracy is rule by the people, deciding things collectively, following principles like justice, consent, and how to maximize everyone's freedom. And that's why the term democratic state is an oxymoron. There are no democratic states. All states are authoritarian. I'm Chris, and this is what had to be said. There is a belief inculcated into us in school that a so-called democratic government is the collective will of the people, and that Congress or Parliament is the talking shop for organizing society and getting things done collectively. That raises a few questions. My first one is, who are the people? You mean all of them? But don't we all have different interests and needs? The whole idea of the people came, as far as I know, from the French Revolution, when they declared, we want a state that governs for all the people, not just the aristocracy. It's too bad they didn't have much of a theory of the state, though, because they didn't realize there is no one people, and the state, by its nature, can't uphold things like liberté, égalité, et fraternité. So instead of working out these contradictions, the state took the form of Robespierre, followed by Napoleon who persuaded some of them that they all wanted war with the entire continent of Europe for some reason, and off they went. And that was the collective will of the people, apparently. Did the state ask the people what they wanted first? Does it ever? No. It does not ask for consent. And why would it? You wouldn't consent to hardly anything it does. If the state could somehow work for all the people, it wouldn't use force, and the people would be involved in all decisions that affect them. But then it wouldn't be a state. Politicians, bureaucrats, police, these people don't wake up saying, how can I serve the people today? How can I work towards this elusive greater good? They might spend a bit of time telling themselves that what they do is of value to everyone, but they don't ask you what's right or what you want, do they? They have other priorities, which are usually doing exactly what people with money tell them to. Government forces you to do everything it says. <clears throat> Every time a law is passed, that's a new order for you to follow. Force changes everything. Force is the reason government doesn't have to do what you want. In other words, why it's not accountable. Force is why government is not and does not have to be efficient or fair, because if you don't like it, you can't change it. Sure, you could vote for a different party, but when was the last time that made government efficient, or stop lying, or stop working exclusively for the rich? Force is the reason no one can control government spending, for example. Government has the power to take as much of your money as it wants. And force is the reason we can't opt out of anything the government does. If you live in this country, and that's every country, you pay and you obey. It's not we as a society who've decided this, but they as a small group who have. And elections will not change that, they'll just reinforce it. The sad thing is that most of us don't see the gun pointed at us and even respect the people holding it. Propaganda is one way the people in power manufacture legitimacy for their policies. There's no way you could argue, for example, Americans in 2001 as a whole wanted to launch a full-scale invasion of Iraq. And yet, 
between September of that year, 9-11, and the beginning of 2003, when they invaded, Americans were inundated with lies about how Iraq and Saddam are incredibly dangerous, we should all be afraid of them, they're giving nuclear weapons to terrorists, they're killing all their own people, we should invade and free the people. That's what we do. We're heroes that way. The same propaganda is being used right now to get Americans ready for some kind of military force against Iran, so please don't fall for the lies. The powerful use propaganda to make people agree with their policies, but also to believe in the system as a whole. Um, I talked about that in the last one or two videos. Um, they, they also want to give us ways to argue in favor of the system, so people like me who've gone to university can give you any kind of reason why you're wrong that we, we have to go without or make radical changes. They also use propaganda to rewrite the past to suit the present, to suit themselves in the present, and to distract from what they're really doing. Propaganda also requires persuading us that we're part of a country, which really is just the territory controlled by the local elite, and that, that our country has a glorious past and future, and because it's superior to other countries, seeing our local elites gain power and get rich at our expense is somehow better than if foreigners did it. Don't say anything bad about my country! I am thoroughly indoctrinated. Why would it be good that we're all subject to the force of the state? I've been told it's because we should all be forced to follow the law equally. But that assumes the state's laws are good and necessary and need to be applied equally. But they're not. And, and why would they be? They weren't made for us. And laws don't get repealed. Remember around 2013, there was widespread outcry on the internet uh, for a month or two because Congress was planning to pass a bill that would strictly regulate the internet. The bill wasn't passed. Democracy works, right? Then a few months later, when things had died down, they passed a different bill, which observers said was even worse for our internet freedom. And they do that all the time. So even when the public make it clear that they don't want a law passed, if the people with money do, who cares what the rest of us want? Laws are decided by money and implemented by force. Democracy or dictatorship, most of us are on the receiving end of the law. <clears throat> I also don't get the patriot argument that we're a country, so we need people to make decisions for us, for all of us, for our whole country. Where's the logic there? What does it even mean? Because I live where a given state calls its jurisdiction, I have to be forced to act like everyone else within that state? Why? Why should they be... Why, uh, why should they be forced? Why should we be forced into any of these laws at all? If people are going to use force, they should be able to justify every single use of force to you. And if they can't, they shouldn't have that power at all. And since the laws were not made with us in mind, it's not like the laws have some special quality that somehow reflect our culture. They're just the dictates of the elite. The country is the boundary of the local elite's power. What are you so of proud of? Force is also the reason the whole idea of being represented falls apart on examination. How does a politician represent you? What exactly do they do that represents you? Do you want to fund a war overseas? Or sell missiles to dictators? Do you want to evict poor people from their homes? Do you want to send people to jail for selling weed? 
Do you want to cage people at the border, separating children and parents indefinitely just because they're trying to cross a fucking border? Do you want to break strikes because they're bad for business? Or give bosses multi-billion dollar handouts? Do you benefit from putting trade sanctions on people in other parts of the world? Did you ask the state to criminalize making generic drugs to save lives? Did you give the state the power to control its entire territory and parcel it out to corporations so they could get rich and you could go to prison for protesting them? But your rulers represent you, right? And yet, even though unaccountability to constituents is pretty much an iron law of democratic or any other politics, people often stick by their so-called representative. I can see a couple of reasons for that. First, uh, a lot of the things politicians do that we wouldn't like, we don't find out about. How much time has your local representative spent meeting with lobby groups? How did they vote on the last five bills? How could you know? You have better things to do with your time than track their every step. So we just watch the news and trust what we're hearing is what we need to hear about this person. Second, we have natural biases that make us want to believe these people are working for us. Humans tend to believe that most of the things that we do are right, and we come, become more and more convinced those things were right over time. That's self-serving bias and confirmation bias. Then there's conformity bias, doing, uh, doing like everyone else. Ambiguity bias, where the devil you know is better than the devil you don't. And status quo bias, making us favor the status quo and even refuse to question it. So things can stay the way they are. But these biases are not helping us free our minds. So naturally, we want to continue to believe what we've been told, that the state represents and works for us, that change happens through the system, and that the only alternatives to democracy are dictatorship and chaos. They aren't. There's also grassroots democracy, stateless democracy participatory democracy, where people make decisions that affect themselves in small groups and don't force everyone else to do what they say. That's real democracy. We'll talk about that in a couple of weeks. For now, please hit like and subscribe to this channel so you can see the rest of the videos in this series when they come out. See you next week!